Information from each side of the body goes to the opposite side of the brain. And many functions are performed half on one side, half on the other. But certain tasks are committed much more to one hemisphere, especially in human beings. The right hemisphere is specialized for spatial judgments, while the left can describe its perceptions in words. Normally, these two specialized halves work together as one. I know the left hemisphere and right hemisphere now are working independent of each other, but you don't notice it. Now, you just kind of adapt to it. It doesn't, you don't have any feeling, it doesn't feel any different than it did before. The corpus callosum, a huge bundle of fibers, connects the two halves of the brain. When it's damaged, in Joe's case through surgery to relieve epilepsy, then it almost seems that there are two separate people sharing a single head. What we can do is play tricks by putting information into his dis disconnected, mute, non-talking right hemisphere and watch it produce behaviors. And out of that, we can really see that there is, in fact, uh, a reason to believe that there's all kinds of complex processes going on outside of his conscious awareness of his left half brain. Joe, I'm going to show you some things. I just want you to tell me what you see. And here we go. You ready? Look right at the dot. Okay. Right. Okay, you ready? Look right at the dot. Grapes. Good. When Joe focuses on a point, Look right at the dot. everything to the right of the point goes to his left brain, the dominant hemisphere for language and speech. Look right at the dot. So we can see here that when we flash a word or a picture, Tree. Joe Tree. is easily able to name it. See it. Close your eyes and let your left hand do a little work here. Okay, what do you got there? Pan. Okay, very good. Now, when a word or a picture falls to the left of a fixation point, that information goes to his disconnected right half brain. And as we can see here, Joe is unable to name it. Joe is able to draw the picture with his left hand, the left hand getting its major control from the right half brain. What'd you draw? Okay. What'd you see? Wheel on one side, I don't know where I saw the other. So even though he can't name it, his left hand is able to draw out the picture okay. of the stimulus of the picture or word that right. we presented to his right half brain. What did you see? So just close your eyes and draw with your left hand. Just let it go. That's nice. What's that? Saw. Yeah. What'd you see? Hammer. What'd you draw that for? I don't know. What Joe and patients like him, and there are many of them, teaches us is that the mind is made up of a constellation of independent, semi-independent uh, agents. And that these agents, these processes can carry on a vast number of activities outside of our conscious awareness. Even though that goes on, there's some final stage or some final system, which I happen to think is in the left hemisphere, that pulls this, all of this information together into a theory. It has to generate a theory to explain all of this, all of these independent elements. And so, uh, and, and, and that theory becomes our particular theory of ourself and of the world. From impulses leaving the eyes to a theory of ourself and the world, we're beginning to learn how the cerebral cortex gives us our understanding. Francis Crick, famous for his contributions to molecular biology, is now fascinated with perception and with the relationship between brains.